Kevin O'Leary attacks Mark Cuban's claim. Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about Kevin O'Leary attacks Mark Cuban's claim. Let's get right into it. When the sharks from Shark Tank start circling each other, you can bet the waters are getting a bit choppy. In a recent controversy, investor Kevin O'Leary tackled Mark Cuban's claim that going woke gives businesses an edge, saying, The duty of corporations isn't to school society on today's hot button social issues. Appearing on Fox & Friends, O'Leary urged that when businesses like Target and Anheuser-Busch dip their toes into politics, they risk alienating customers. His take was in stark contrast to his Shark Tank co-star and NBA owner, Cuban standpoint, who said woke businesses aren't drowning financially but rather are buoyed up. In his Sunday interview with the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, Cuban waved off the ongoing backlash, predicting it will peter out. Even with giants like Anheuser-Busch and Target Corporation weathering a storm stirred up by the LGBTQ marketing tactics. However, Cuban's optimism doesn't align with the numbers. Since April, AB InBev's partnership with transgender TikTok sensation Dylan Mulvaney has resulted in a staggering market cap plunge of $22.6 billion. Adding salt to the wound, Bud Light lost its crown to Modelo Especial as America's favorite brew in May. Even though Cuban maintains that wokeness is a fiscal boon, O'Leary's argument questions whether businesses should be social crusaders or stick to their primary mission, profit-making. The real verdict may ultimately lie in the cash register's ring. So is going woke a smooth sail? Or are these companies just jumping the shark? Cuban recently stood up for companies like Anheuser-Busch and Target Corporation, which face backlash over their promotion of LGBTQ ideologies. Cuban believes that their perceived losses were not the fallout of their woke stance, rather incidental. Pointing at flourishing US businesses he sees as woke, he argues that being socially aware can be profitable, despite contrasting expert opinions. However, his Shark Tank co-star Kevin O'Leary sees things differently, suggesting businesses should steer clear of contentious political waters and be mindful of their diverse customer base. When you're a Disney, a Bud Brewer, or a Target, your customer pool spans across Republicans, Democrats, those who identify with specific genders and those who don't, O'Leary noted. He warned that businesses could see their customer base have by taking sides on polarizing issues. O'Leary's stress is a universal business truth. You aim to sell to everyone, all the time. Entangling yourself in partisan disputes could cost you half your customers, he cautioned. It's baffling why a consumer goods or service company would risk that. Essentially, O'Leary advocates for companies to stick to their knitting, prioritizing their primary role, providing goods or services to consumers. Whether embracing wokeness leads to corporate success or downfall remains a hot topic. The classic American view of businesses, according to Kevin O'Leary, is one that focuses on serving customers, employees, and shareholders not teaching society today's social issues lesson. It's a lesson companies are quickly learning, with their stock prices playing the role of a real-time report card. Take Bud Light, for example. Recently, sales tanked again, plunging 24.4% in just a week, while its competitor's Modelo Especial is partying it up. This follows a storm of backlash against Bud Light's ill-fated partnership with transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney. Once the king of beers, Bud Light has been dethroned by Modelo Especial amidst the uproar, losing a reign that lasted over two decades. The numbers paint a clear picture. In the week ending June 3rd, Bud Light sales took a nosedive, falling a staggering 24.4%, even surpassing the previous week's 23.9% plunge. Today it seems Bud Light is no longer the life of the party. Bartenders claim that their customers are sidelining it at events ever since it lost the title of America's best-selling beer. Target is another case study in the woke equals broke argument. All this goes to show that the business landscape is no longer simply about products and profit, it's increasingly becoming a tightrope walk between social conscience and commercial success. Is going woke a one-way ticket to going broke? Target Corporation recently took a hit following its decision to stock tuck-friendly transgender swimwear and pride merchandise. The retail heavyweight lost a staggering $12 billion in just a fortnight, marking its lengthiest losing streak in five years and pushing shares to a year low. As public outrage fanned the flames of the Pride swimwear controversy, Target saw its market cap shrink by $15 billion. By the day's end, the Minneapolis-based company's shares had slipped further down, another 3.26%. With the stock price now hovering around $126.99 per share, it's a far cry from last month's high of nearly $162 per share. Before the tempest, Target's shares were priced at an impressive $162 each, a figure that has now fallen to around $126.99. This significant drop represents the impact of public sentiment on the company's stock value. 
Prior to the controversy, target market value was listed at over $74 billion by the Dow Jones Market Data Group. Today, that value has nosedived to approximately $54 billion. Kevin O'Leary didn't mince words about the situation. When your market cap tanks by 9, 10, 11, 12 billion dollars, it's clear you've rubbed someone the wrong way, and that someone is your customer. That's not just bad business, it's catastrophic business. The whole scenario paints a vivid picture. The business world is not just about profit margins and stock prices anymore. It's also a high-stakes balancing act between societal values and financial viability. Is going woke a one-way ticket to going broke? Only time will tell. That's all for today, and we'll be sure to catch you all in the next one.